Hi everyone, this is Camper Cooking with Chef Paul. We are Americans living in France who have always liked camping and eating well. Like many of you, we bought a camping car after the first pandemic lockdown so we could still travel safely. Chef Paul does most of the food prep at home so we can have more time to explore. He will show you how a classically trained chef prepares great food even with a camper's minimal kitchen utilizing historical and modern techniques. I want to make some Creole sauce. I really love Creole sauce. And I think the word means a blending of cultures. The first Creole sauce I ever had was one my mother made and it was really, really amazing. As opposed to a Louisiana version. Where we lived in Charleston had a heavy French influence as well. The Huguenot had settled pretty heavily in in Charleston area 400 years ago. Ironically, this is not a sauce you would find in France, except today. So all of these vegetable scraps are going in my stock pot. Even though I don't have a chicken or anything to put in my stock pot, but tomorrow is market day, so probably I'll have one tomorrow. The availability of what you can buy in the produce section from France varies a whole lot by season. And right now, this is what you see on the table is pretty much the extent of what you can find because they don't really import a lot of produce. There's some stuff from Spain and Italy and even Africa. They tend to really focus on what, what can be grown locally. And we're in the dead of winter, so it's just not as much as, as you might like. We're going to make a vegetable intense sauce. And I want a relatively fine dice for this sauce. And I'm using local red onions and local white onions. This is a sauce that's really pretty nice if you have sweet onions. Sweet onions are really nice in this as well. I don't have any. Okay, I'm leaving the garlic aside for now because I don't want to put it in too early. It gets bitter if you saute it too early. This dish is really a very sweet and spicy hot dish. So I don't want these bitter components like the white part of the pepper. Don't want that at all. So I'll take most of that out. So a small dice, but not a fine dice or an overly precise dice. I asked my mother about her recipe for this a few years ago after I'd kind of gotten set in my ways about the way I make it. We agreed that celery was really, really an important ingredient. She said that she chopped up all the celery leaves in there as well. I don't do that. But I don't think she makes stock quite the same way as I do. I use more celery in this than probably anything else I make, except maybe like a remoulade sauce. Yes, I have risked. I hope I am always able to risk everything for the just and right cause. Closest I can come to crushed chilies. There's a little heat there. So I have to pause chopping vegetables, even though I have some, a lot more to go in. Make sure I start cooking some of these chilies into the vegetables now. There's a little bit of late burn on these, so that's good. and I cook it that way and that was pretty amazing but even I try to avoid eating too much lard now. Okay celery root. I don't usually use this but here 
Celery root is actually more common than branch celery. So you get a lot of great celery flavor from this, but you don't get the celery sweetness out of celery root that you do out of branch celery. So if you had to use one or the other, I would use the branch celery. And again, I'm making a stock so I can be pretty generous with what I trim out here. Today's adventurers are driven by the lust to reach somewhere no one has reached before and to do something no one has done before. this onion but the green part's going to go in very last are another thing I don't always put in this sauce but leeks are something you can buy here year-round and I really love the flavor I really love the texture they seem like they're really stringy and, and weird but they just melt away into anything you cook so I don't have to worry about dicing them as fine as I would most things I know it's going to be amazing in here so I would say if you can find leeks I know they're not as popular in America they're harder to find then by all means use them. But if you don't, it's not a big deal. So at this point, the vegetables are pretty well sweated. So I'm no longer sauteing them. I'm starting to poach them kind of in their own juices, which is what I want. Plus with all that butter I keep adding. I'm gonna cut my heat down to medium low. And I can work on my garlic. Okay, I think I'm gonna need more. Let's keep ourselves safe from vampires. For those who are left behind. I personally figured I was watching something that somebody else would never see again in the world. Thought it was once in a lifetime. Our sauce is cooking. It'll need a couple more hours. I'm going to go ahead and slice these green onions, but they're not going to go in yet. Sometimes I don't even add the green onions until whatever I'm ultimately cooking is finished and I'll just sprinkle them on top. I'm going to cook these in because I like the flavor, but I don't want to overcook them. First time I ever had it was when my mother made it and it was with shrimp. And that's probably the most famous way to use this sauce. But it's by no means the only way. It's also really good with chicken. You know, just saute, pan fry a chicken breast finish it with a sauce that's pretty amazing it's good with squid calamari it's really good with cod 
really almost any white meat fish it's amazing with. I'm hoping tomorrow to get some cod. Although this sauce won't be as good tomorrow as it would be the next day. Because anything with tomatoes in it is best when you can take it through temperature extremes. And I intend to can most of this. And that's going to put it through a lot of temperature extremes and just really make an amazing sauce. Plus it'll make it easier for me to use in the camping car. Okay, we're bubbling along nicely here. Vegetables are partially cooked. Starting to get a little burn, even in the steam coming off of this from all those chilies we put in. Here's a different kind of chili chili, dried chili I found. It's kind of powdered and brown. It has a really slow burn. I like a slow burn. Last of my Czech cayenne pepper. Here's some I found locally. I'm trying to look on it to see where it came from. It only has French addresses on it, which means it's going to be pretty bland. Some smoked paprika and a lot of basil. Basil is actually one of the places where the sweetness is going to come from. Brown sugar is a hard thing to find here. First of all, it's hard to find cane sugar, although this is from cane. This is casanada. It's actually more like turbinado sugar. But what I want is brown sugar, which I bought this the last time I was in England. I could use the terminado sugar or just table sugar and some molasses, which is also hard to find, but it, it can be found. So I've got kind of half a cup in there. And I want a little more. I make chicken stock about once a week and it's something that belongs in here. And I usually have, you know, kind of four liters of it and I'm always out. So this is a high quality bouillon that I'm gonna to have to use instead. But traditionally you would use chicken stock and cook it down because you want this to be really, really thick. So I wanna make sure that sugar is thoroughly melted because again, that's gonna help all the spices permeate the vegetables and adding that sweetness is actually gonna make it hotter. I'm using my favorite Heinz tomato sauce. This one says it has 22 tomatoes. Does it look like there's a lot left in there? I think we need to give that a good rinse. Santi. There's no point in tasting it till it comes back to a boil to even have any idea what's going on with it. Oh yeah, that's got some heat, but it's missing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22. And this heat will actually intensify. And I'm gonna cut this way down in temperature. I'm gonna let it cook, because all that beer has to evaporate. And even as thick as this is, the vegetables are not quite part of the sauce. So this is gonna have to cook for a couple hours. I'll check back with you. I just gave it another taste, and it doesn't have the complexity of sweetness that I was looking for. And it's because I didn't have enough basil in it. 
And so I added another couple of tablespoons of it. We're probably going to get close to a half cup of dried basil in here. So if you were using fresh basil, which would be amazing in here, you would need added the basil, but it's still missing. And it's got a lot of slow burn, but not a lot of the upfront peppery flavors that I want. We'll add some fresh ground and some previously ground black pepper. When I say some, I mean a lot. That's getting better. We'll let it cook for another hour or two and I'll let you know as I continue to update the seasoning. I'm getting a really good late burn that comes from those crushed chilies and I'm getting an okay medium burn that comes from the cayenne pepper, but I'm not getting the upfront burn that I want. And that's because usually I can I dice about a half a dozen jalapenos into here with the seeds. And that's just not an option here. I have some canned jalapenos and I have some green Tabasco. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I had some green Tabasco and that's going to have to be my substitute. Those of you anywhere but France probably don't have this problem. And I'll go ahead and use these. Usually I dice about a half dozen jalapenos with the seeds into the Creole sauce. I can't find jalapenos here. I found them once and they were really bland, but I did find some seeds. So hopefully next year we can make this better. Today's adventurers are driven by the lust to reach somewhere no one has reached. Could need at least another hour. Usually I can finish this sauce in about an hour, maybe two hours total between prep and simmer time. But I cooked this for about four hours last night and I kept getting a flavor that I've never gotten before. Kind of a real bitter, almost a scorched tomato flavor. And the most obvious thing would be that, yeah, I scorched the tomatoes but I'm using a really heavy, high quality pot on an induction range and there just aren't any hot spots. I don't see anything remotely scorched. I don't feel anything remotely scorched. I do get that kind of phenolic scorched flavor, intensely bitter. It's not so bad today as it was yesterday because I cooked it for about four hours. And that tells me there are two possible culprits. One is that I wasn't aggressive enough getting all the white part off the peppers. You saw me trim most of it away, but I left some. I wasn't as careful as I should have been. But there were only two peppers in here, so that wasn't it. I think what it is is the celery root, because I never made it with celery root before. And even after I brushed my teeth last night, I still tasted a little faint celery. So like I said, it's not as bad today, but it's still not quite right. It's got a nice slow burn. It's got a nice medium burn. It's not as sweet as it should be. And I still get just a hint of that phenolic. So that really does suggest to me that cooking it longer broke down the starches in that celery and converted them. Well, it's got a really nice slow burn, but it's not nearly sweet enough. So I'm going to add a bunch more sugar, but first I want to add a little lemon juice. The problem I have I don't use a lot of lemons. I buy them. These are a couple months old. I'm not going to be able to cut them and just squeeze them in. Normally I would just squeeze these through my hand and catch the seeds in my fingers, but I can barely move that. Oh, that should be plenty. Now I know adding all of that citric, which is a sour flavor, means I'm really going to have to work to get it sweet. I'm going to give it a quick taste now, even though the sugar hasn't had a chance to melt in properly, just to see if the lemon juice helped more than anything else. Yeah, that's much closer. All right, I'm going to let this cook for another hour. I still feel like it doesn't have enough basil. And a little bit of thyme, maybe a quarter teaspoon of thyme, two medium bay leaves. And since I'm having to cook this longer than I normally would, I'm going to thin it with some water. I would love to put beer in here, but I'm fighting against the bitterness. So I really don't want to add a bunch of hops, which are very bitter. We're on medium low. I'm going to let it cook for an hour. I'm pretty happy with this now. I still would like more of that early burn th that I would get from fresh jalapenos, but that's just not an option for me until the summer when I can grow my own. I have the sweetness right. I did sneak in a little of this. Lay and Perrin's Worcestershire, and that helped round out some flavor. But now I'm going to can most of it. 
The sauce freezes really well too. But I'm always a little limited on freezer space. You know, I have almost as much freezer space in my camping car as I do at home. And 10 minutes would probably be enough, but this feels safer going 20. So go 20 minutes at high pressure, then I'll cool them, dry them, label them, and those should be honestly good for years, but they won't last that long around here. That's a pretty good place to stop this week's video. I cooked this dish four or five times that week and made my wife eat five, six different kinds of creoles. I'm going to show you the best of them in next week's episode. I really appreciate you watching, subscribing, sharing, all that kind of stuff really helps me a lot. And I hope this works for you.